the, 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 the share, uh, the, that I'm the responsible. And then um, maybe um, I would like to ask then uh, Maria Lin, Philip, and Bruno, can you can you join then um, the Hi Bruno? Philip? Hello. Hi Bruno. Hello. Are you still there? Yes, yes, no, I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Then um then we will come to, to our yeah final section of the um, uh yeah of our conference. Thanks to the three of you that you you yeah you agreed to be the panelists in the in the final part of uh, the, the, the conference uh, in our round table bio waste recycling a cornerstone in the in the circular bioeconomy um i will have all the time the question so if somebody has questions of course you can ask this question um during the the, the round table i i will try also to ask some questions uh Maybe maybe I will start with Maria Lin as Bruno and Philip had already the option to 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 talk or give some some comments. Uh, I would like um, Maria Lin, uh, when you are working in either Lux uh, environment, what are your your current bio waste treatment uh, options? What you have and and um, why you, are you invest as an end? It's investing of time and resources also to this kind of things like like volatile. Um, also, what are the current virus treatment things? As a, as Thais was, for example, presenting some things what they are doing, what you are doing in either at the moment with the bio waste, and and yeah, uh, why you are investing time and resources uh, in something like uh, uh, the volatile project. Well, uh, nowadays in IVLIX environment, uh, we have an AD plant, so we have a, an anaerobic digester. So the bio waste, they are uh, pre treated and then they enter in this um, anaerobic uh, digester, and then the digested is uh, co composted with uh, green waste, and then we have this compost that is used um, uh, for farmers. And then we produce uh, biogas that is used uh, in CHP motors for producing heat and electricity. Um, and why are we interested in uh, to invest time in volatile project? Well, because um, as it has been said during this um, conference, uh, the incomes are not sufficient. Uh, the exploitation costs are, are a lot, and without the subsidies, uh, it's not viable uh, on the long term. So we would like to improve our uh, waste treatment processes, and uh, we think that uh, these kind of uh, R&D uh, projects are necessary to do so. Um, and, and, and especially, I mean, something like the VFA platform could be very interesting for uh, waste management plants like ours, uh, because um, if we could sell this VFA permeate, then we could imagine to sell it back to another company like the one of Bruno, for example, uh, to Biotrend, let's say, if they would have been interested to use this VFA for um, PHA production, and then why not associate uh, us with another company that could produce uh, bin bags, for example, compostable, of course. And then uh, these compostable bin bags can enter back into the bio waste uh, as a biomass, and, and then the loop is closed. And, and then we can imagine that uh, it's interesting for everybody then because we could reduce the cost that we ask to the citizen to treat their waste, and, and, and it's very environmental friendly. And we could also uh, create new job offers uh, and new skills uh, around. But as, as, as we have seen here, there's a lot of um, challenges that still needs to be um, answered. But uh, I believe that these kind of R&D projects are for that reason. So yeah, we're very, very, uh, really happy to be a partner of this uh, 
nice project. Okay, thanks, Maria Lin. And Terry, I wanted first to ask Philip, but now as Maria Lin was connecting it so nicely to Bruno, uh, uh, Bruno, beside um, um, the polyhydroxyalkanoids, where we, we, we discussed already that there is certain uh, advantage using this kind of uh, um, volatile fatty acids, the mix of these kind of volatile fatty acids. How you evaluate the potential of volatile fatty acids for different bioprocesses, as you are not only an expert for, for uh, biopolymers, but also for other fermentation processes. Uh, how you evaluate the, 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 the potential of them to be used as a carbon source for the, the bioeconomy? Uh, so, um, the potential is very high when you can couple it to uh, specific functionalities, which mm -hmm. can be um, given to the end product uh, by the fact that you're using not one central carbon source and then the bug needs to uh, synthesize all the building blocks or all the uh, uh, molecules that make the matrix of the product. But in, in, such, in those cases where you need to have a specific profile of molecules, then starting from different building blocks that can enable um, the, 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 this profile to be uh, generated in an easier way by the uh, particular cellular system which is converting the VFAs into the product, that that mm -hmm. could be of advantage. So uh, I I try not to compare on a carbon to carbon basis only, but also okay. on the functionalities that you can derive. So I already uh, mentioned the functionalities related to the um, polyhydroxyalkanoates. You get different mechanical properties because you have a variety of monomers which are um, mm -hmm. uh, introduced in the polymer. Uh, but even something that um, uh, Marcos was mentioning this morning. Um, to replace specific uh, oils, which today uh, are becoming uh, are, are are not sustainable anymore, or are being perce increasingly perceived as non-sustainable, these oils used by the industry are not uh, just one molecule. It's a it's a mix of molecules with specific profiles, and if we can uh, kind of uh, make use of the diversity of uh, molecules which are available in the VFA uh, permeates and try to make use of that to uh, more easily produce the diversity of molecules that we use in many different um, materials that they are not that refined. Um, mm -hmm. That could bring an extra an advantage beyond just having a cheaper uh, although I take the point from Maria Lind, they, they, she wants to sell the VFA, so of course they, they, they will have a, um, a cost, um, hopefully still cheaper than the commercial sugars and refined oils, but still um, we, if we, we should try to avoid uh, battling just on a cost of carbon, uh, but try to check the applications in which this diversity of molecules can be of advantage. And there I do see a lot of potential uh, because mm -hmm. they, they can, at least the, 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 the microorganisms that we used and that we tested, and we're working with different microorganisms as well, uh, similar to some of the microorganisms that were uh, involved in the work of uh, our friends at Boku and our friends in Athens. Um, the, the, these carbon sources are readily metabolized by many different types of, uh, of mm -hmm. microorganisms, so they, they, they are really promising. It's just a matter of finding the, 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 the balance of having the, these molecules fed at the right uh, pace in order to avoid some toxicity that, that they can have on the system. But this is not very difficult to manage once you have a, a fairly stable uh, raw material input, it's not that difficult to manage, and so the potential is, is, is very high. That being said, we need to be very aware that, um, as Maria Lin mentioned, this is a research project, and uh, why this uh, project was funded as a research project, because we're still in the beginning of this adventure. So um, there's still a lot of challenges, and we are actually working with real-life materials, um, which mm -hmm. fluctuate over time, and um, and yeah, there there's still s several challenges to to be addressed. So hopefully, 
a lot of funding opportunities as well to move this technology, which uh, I guess Volatile provided very compelling case studies. And now it's time to mm -hmm. move uh, from the, the proof of concept that has been validated to a fairly ITRL for a research project, uh, I should say, and move towards demonstration and eventually commercialize, commercialization. Okay, Bruno, thank, thanks a lot. But uh, good, that, that brings me also then directly to the next question and also to the, to the, uh, so I, I retake something what uh, I was answering before in the, in, in the net, but that's then for Philip. Um, uh, uh, as as um, uh, Bruno said, okay, we are on the beginning of the way, let's say. Uh, uh, so, but the way, also th th that means that the work to, towards the circular bar economy is, is still on the on the move. Um, so, uh, Philip, um, are were there things? Also, first of all, um, what are the things what we should? Also, taking also into account what Bruno said, uh, stables, volatile fatty assets, um, because to develop further bio uh, processes, uh, it should be a certain Mm, yeah, spectra and so on and, uh, of volatile fatty acids. So, which kind of things uh, we, we we should improve in the volatile fatty acid platform for the future to bring it really to the market? As a where where we would need uh, uh, further um, developments, let's see. And and did did we? As we as I now we were together designing the the, the proposal. Did we take everything under consideration as we were starting with the project, or uh, you you were now surprised with, by some some aspects during 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 the way uh, that where we were not thinking in the beginning, especially in the in the context of the volatile fatty asset platform? Philip, um, a lot of questions. Um, yeah. yeah, of course, it's it's, it's the research. Um, more projects, uh, so we need, we need we need a lot, a lot more um, research to, to get to the final commercial um, project. Um, and, and indeed, as, as Bruno highlighted, we had, we had a, um, a very constant, um, redefined uh, PFA spectrum. This is, this is very important in this, in this aspect. Mm -hmm. um, with other organization, it's, it's it's much easier to get maintained with the. Of the operation can, can, can differ a little bit, but it's 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 methane and it's CO2. It's these 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 two components. Right. 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 Here we're, we're looking at the acid, 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 and and these things can be present more or less in the spectrum. So so even if if each of these spectra are suitable for a product, for example, for taking. Hello, camera. It's come. I don't know if it's only my my uh, voice. Uh, no, it's no, it's, it's a shame. Yeah, Philip sounding like Darth Vader. I I would suggest yeah. that 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 uh, Philip should reconnect. Reconnect to the. Normally, this effect is 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 if if your if your computer fell asleep in between and it comes up again and then you have silly noises. So maybe okay, okay, well, I will try if, if if we Philip, are you using well, USB? Right, so the camera, uh, the, the mute uh, the micro maybe one moment and try to connect. And... Or oh, if if he has a new USB headset, uh, try to pull it out and uh, push and push it in again, so that it is reinitialized. No, I think not. I'll say something again. Is it better? No, no. no, no. Okay, uh, we will, thought, we, as you did the presentation, it was okay. Yeah, we will um, shut down and, and, and uh, reconnect again since you not helps. Okay. Okay. So then, may, may, maybe in the meantime, um, Marialin, uh, in. In which kind? As of course, you are now part of Volatile. It's a specific research project, yeah. But in which kind of technologies you are normally? As you are looking also in other uh, technologies, or this uh, Volatile Fatty Asset Platform is a interesting approach for you. 
or you are also looking and as a, there are a lot of research projects running with different valorization uh, output let's say uh, for example methane could be transformed in syngas uh, as a these kind of things you are also looking on other applications or especially the volatile fatty asset platform fits in your 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 general business model of course, the VFA platform suggested by uh, by the project was uh, perfect for our plants because we have an Andranko AD plant, so AWS knew exactly, and and it was it was easier and it was specifically related to waste treatment plants because generally projects uh, specifically work on um, food or vegetable. A waste that's a specific stream and it's a clean one there's no um, no inorganic contaminants for example uh, and and it's um, constant so uh, this project was uh, specifically well fitted for us um, but we we are open to a lot of uh, diverse other uh, projects because we are for example a partner of a recover project a bbi a european project that is interested in the um, biodegradation of plastics that are not uh, compostable um, and the idea is we we included uh, we, we could uh, join the the consortium because um, uh, we strongly believe that we need to um, improve the compost that's made of uh, bio waste because of these sorting uh, mistakes made by the citizen. We have a lot of inorganics in the compost, ending in the compost. And of course, when you do, I mean, if you have bio waste, you have uh, two options or you compost it or you um, put it in an anaerobic digester and then you compost it also at the end. Uh, or, or you use the digested directly as it is, but anyway, the inorganics that are in your uh, AD plant goes then in the in the field, and then we would like to uh, work on this uh, plastics, uh, microplastic mm -hmm. elements uh, in the in the field. So no, we we are uh, looking for also other projects like also uh, producing um, um, from from the biogas uh, to 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 make our trucks work uh, based on biogas, for example, that would be great. And then we could say to our citizen, look, uh, thanks to your well-sorted organic waste, we could um, uh, make our trucks go and pick up your bio waste in front of your house, for example. Uh, no, of course, there's a lot of other, th uh, other things, but it's difficult to be partner um, and, and, and to find the specific topic that is, uh, that is um, fitting with our uh, processes. I don't know if I answered the question. No, no, yeah. no that's good. Okay. So, so one of the outputs is also for the commission or whatever that this kind of topic should be, I don't know, I don't want to say more aligned to, to what are really the needs of, of the companies to, so that you can bring there in also your, your, your research needs. In a better way yes, let's see. yes i think the waste it, it's as we mentioned here also the waste uh, like municipal solid waste is the worst to work on and that's why research is very necessary because there's contaminants it's dirty it smells bad and i think that lots of uh, as, as Jorgen said a lot of biorefineries are based on on on, on the clean stream as, as i just mentioned before uh, more it's it's more on uh, on, on cross crops or, or vegetable or, or yes food uh, from industries but uh, municipal solid waste is, is a mix of so much things and and it's, um, yes it, it's already uh, it, it spent some days before to arrive in our plants and and still some days before to to be processed so yeah okay yeah. okay Th thanks Marianne Philip maybe you we try now to say some words maybe it's better I hope it's better now. No, yeah, it's yeah. better. No, it's better. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, do you want me to repeat the, the, the questions, what you said? Or <laughs> Maybe a short remember? question that everyone knows again uh, what I'll be. Oh, okay, saying. okay, wait, wait. I have to open it again. <laughs> um, okay, the key, the, key, the key information where, uh, okay, we said that we are now on the, on the first step towards the circular bioeconomy as, as uh, Bruno also mentioned so that we are on uh, finishing our research project. So there are a lot of things still to do. So that, that means the question is, 
what are the things what we should what needs to be further developed from from your perspective as, as a technology provider and uh, uh, and did you or did we um, yeah identified things where we were not thinking in the beginning as we prepared the proposal but it's already four years uh, ago uh, from my perspective i learned a lot but um, also from your perspective or, or normally the the expert and anaerobic direct digest digestion did you identify also things where you were not thinking about before as we started with this uh, project I, I don't think there, there are big issues that that arose during the project that we didn't take somehow into account um, mm. so um, actually i think it um, started off better than we anticipated because we were quite soon able to, to produce quite already some some good yield uh, of all the fatty acids from from our waste uh, so we ended up with, with on average, uh, with pretreatment of, of 50% of the of the methane potential that we could recover as well as fatty acids, which I think is already quite good for a, for a first project on it. Mm -hmm. um, so what what we do need to focus on is is yeah not so foc not not necessarily focusing on improving the yield because that's already quite good and and we have the experience of anaerobic digestion because we're working with the same material, so a pretreatment that works for optimizing biogas potential. Um, also helps on optimizing volatile fatty acid potential. Uh, mm -hmm. But what is really important to focus on is, is to get the spectrum of volatile fatty acids um, on a constant composition so that, that we can supply a product to the market, um, for example, to Bruno or to uh, what, what Boku did, uh, what you did for, for the omega-3 fatty acid, that, that they get a constant input feed, that they don't get a, a shock uh, or have to adapt to a new feed every time we, we provide a new batch. So that, that's definitely something that, that we have to work on. And it will be a challenge because, uh, as Maria Lid said, we're not working with, with one side stream of a very defined uh, industrial process. We're working with mm -hmm. um, yeah, household waste, which can be very diverse in composition, uh, can differ from, from day to day, as, as one day maybe the, the, the waste is coming from, from a very crowded uh, city center, and the next day it's coming from more the, the pre-urban Areas, uh, which could have another composition, also seasonal variability uh, can have an impact. So we, we have to look at at how can we, we keep this, this this process constant, as constant as possible, um, by changing the process parameters, by by looking for co-substrates that we can. Um, if we do an analysis of the waste, that we see, okay, there's there's more fat this this uh, in this batch, so we need to add more more carbohydrates, for example, or the, the, the other way around. Um, do we need to play with the pH or with the temperature to, to keep it within a given range? Uh, so these are definitely things that we should look at. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. a second thing is, is now we, we've already doing, done quite some optimization in the lab, is, is to translate it. Well, we already translated it somehow during our TRL5 pilot, uh, but to go to a full scale. Now a lot of, of, it, of the process was still manually done. So we need to look at how can we automate uh, this this process a little bit like we did also with anaerobic digestion um not me but colleagues of mine started uh, 30 years ago uh, by by going to a small pilot scale and, and um, pressing the pump and the material was going in and every now and then they had to climb into it to uh, unblock it <clears throat> so they they learned it the hard way there so let's mm -hmm. let's hope we can um, um benefit a little bit from their experience already with this material that we don't have to climb into it but it, it will it's, it's a different pretreatment it's a different reactor uh, we're looking on mm. at residence times of four to seven days compared to, to 21 days so the material will be mm. less degraded when it comes out so and that that's mm. definitely an important um, aspect uh, that will um, must be done in the coming uh, years is, is how we can do it on a on a industrial scale. What what type of pumps and and equipment do we need to to make it an automated process um, with a constant output? Oh. What 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 monitoring should be done that we, that we don't get uh, if something goes wrong that we at least uh, see it immediately that we don't have to discard of a full batch uh, because we we saw it uh, too late uh, that the spectrum was going the wrong way. Uh, so these are all aspects that, that definitely should be uh, be controlled. And of course, the suppression of methane uh, production, that, that will be uh, a key parameter uh, during the project, but also uh, post-project uh, throughout yeah, every step until commercial, commercial application. 
uh, suppressing methanes will, will be key, especially with this type of material. Um, because in theory, if you just let this bio waste ferment from itself, in the end you will get um, biogas production. So we know that methane um, methanogens are present in the waste. Uh, so mm -hmm. every time we, we add waste to the reactor, we actually inoculate with some uh, methane uh, producing uh, organisms. Um, mm -hmm. So suppressing them will be key uh, to, to make this a success story. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, we have here one question. Uh, I will also, um, I don't know really if we, we should try to, yeah, um, uh, Henry Gregoire is asking, uh, in the volatile project, did you try it once to produce medium chain carboxylic acids from VFEs and use them for the production of PHA? Do you think that could be, that could increase the benefits of the general process? Um, Thank you for the inspiring seminar. So that there, in theory, there, there are two, two aspects um, covered on one side, the transformation to medium chain carboxylic acids. And the other question is then uh, the, the advantage towards the production of PHA. So Philip and, 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 and Bruno, I don't know. I think in our SEN workshop agreement, we covered also this part or the elongation. Philip, maybe also we didn't we didn't produce medium chain uh, carboxylic acids from v, 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 VFEs um, in the volatile it's, it's, project. It's not it's not in the project, but it, it's it's definitely a, a pathway that we're looking at uh, also at OWS um, because uh, also the, the yeah from C6 on uh, the, the, the the carboxylic acids are much easier to to separate out of the of the medium so that's definitely a pathway that we're looking at um so i don't know if for bruno maybe it's also interesting to to have some phaleric acid or or um, caprobic acids uh, in the in the broth uh, for uh, for the pha characteristics so uh, actually the 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 material that we got um during volatile already had um significant amount of valeric acid and caprobic acid particularly valeric acid. And uh, that resulted into having uh, not medium chain, um, not MCL PHAs, but, uh, but still significantly different mechanical properties on the final polymer. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the uh, constraints that I potentially see in having um, uh, MCL PHAs produced through this technology is the fact that the purification uh, will probably require always the use of organic solvents uh, because the the longer the monomer, the more rubbery and the more hydrophobic the side chains become, and it kind uh, kind of attracts all sorts of rubbish and uh, other molecules in the broth. So the purification becomes quite difficult using aqueous methods, and if we uh, need to use organic solvents then the, um, the, 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 the the cases in which it makes sense to have decentralized production uh, may be a little bit challenged or at least limited to uh, to large urban settings and not um, not smaller villages or small or smaller even even smaller cities so um, that 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 would definitely need to be uh, studied on a case by case basis, and also uh, take um, keeping in mind that um, there's a final aspect of, of all this chain, which is the market, and I don't see Idelux becoming a plastic provider. So Idelux is in the business of treating waste and generating available streams from that waste. And uh, for example, the case which was mentioned by Marie-Aline to try to locally use, for example, uh, a bioplastic to uh, produce compostable bags to serve the same community in which the waste is treated by either looks that makes a perfect sense. If you're trying to produce more sophisticated products, um, it might not make that much sense in the sense of a community and you may require to have dedicated facilities to have uh, and scale 
and, and large scale in order to address those markets specifically. So there's a lot of different aspects that that need to be that, that need to be considered. Okay, uh, Henry, I hope that answers your 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 question. Um, yeah, uh, are there any more uh, questions uh, which could be answered? Um, okay. Uh, so Henry says thanks uh, uh, to, to you uh, for the answer, Philip and, and, and Bruno. Um, yeah, I from my side, yeah, I'm also fine with this. Um, uh, I would like to say thank you very much to the three of you. Um, yeah, let's keep the, the last month uh, working hard to achieve all the the final aspects. I would also like to say thanks to the, all the other partners already. Um, so because then I will uh, go now to the short conclusions and uh, uh, the final questions uh, section. And then uh, yeah, um, thanks to Bruno, Philip, and and, and Marie Ali. Yeah, thanks. Okay, then. Um, Checking just in case there are more questions. No. Okay. Um, yeah. Then 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 we come then we come uh, to the conclusions uh, of this uh, conference um, towards a circular bioeconomy, uh, volatile fatty acid platform for bio waste recycling. First of all, thanks to all the the panelists to to with their interesting presentations. Uh, so we started in the morning um, with an overview about biorefineries in the bioeconomy. So we are we are on the move in the moment from first and second generation uh, biorefineries towards the third generation of uh, biorefineries, uh, which are bio waste based. And uh, yeah, there uh, uh, Jochen uh, from Dechema, Jochen Michel uh, presented this quite nicely this morning. And then, of course, the, the, the main, also not hurdle, but the main aspect um, for a bio waste based uh, uh, um, biorefinery is, of course, the feedstock. How much feedstock is available in a certain region? Uh, which type of feedstock is available? Uh, uh, at which time of the year is this feedstock available? Because we know also from our analysis in the project that not every good uh, the feedstock, a very good feedstock is available all the year around. So this kind of things must be considered. Um, so there, Thais uh, Mocking from Twense gave us uh, this morning also an other, also a short presentation about feedstocks for the third generation biorefinery, uh, focusing especially on our Twense test case in the Netherlands. Uh, then very, very important is not only, also we, we know the general concept, we have the biorefineries, um, then we have feedstocks, but of course, uh, as also we have seen this afternoon, but the market is very important. We should uh, also, as Bruno just um, mentioned, we have to look uh, for the market and looking also where we can uh, create some add-on on, 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 on existing uh, uh, products that we are not directly competing with them. So Adelai was giving Adelai Wiedemann was giving us this morning, um, yeah, let's say a short overview because the work was significantly more what we assessed uh, during the project about the legal aspects and and market requirements or mar market for these kinds of products coming out of bio waste. Then afterwards, of, uh, I gave a short uh, overview about the the volatile project itself, but anyway. The, the other presentations after we were going more in detail. That means Philip we are explaining very nicely the our volatile fatty acid platform, which was developed during our um, project. That afterwards, Bruno uh, showed us the potential not only for also the, the polyhydroxyalkanoates coming out uh, from the volatile fatty acid platform, but also from other uh, waste streams that there's a huge potential to transform different types of bio waste 
in biopolymers, which are then normally biodegradable and can be used for different applications. Um, Markus Neureiter from Boku, he, he presented us the work related to the single cell oil with oligenous G strains. So that means that we have then already for all your chemical uh, applications. So that means we have there already two uh, different um, application chains for this volatile fatty acids because as higher the, 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 the potential um, the, or the, 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 therefore we are increasing the market potential for our volatile fatty acids. As um, Sia was also explaining it, that you have to look also for the market size. And then uh, Vangelis Topakas from NDUA presented us the work related to the, to the transformation of volatile fatty acids via um, heterotrophic microalgae. And as he mentioned there also, there is, it was a quite a success story because we could uh, gain uh, new knowledge, which uh, could be um, yeah, published in, in three, three different papers already. And then to support our, our, the implementation of our volatile fatty acid platform during the project, we worked on pre-standardization approaches, in this case on a SEN workshop agreement which Jochen presented, uh, gave an overview about the procedure. And then also Christian Unerwald from Dean, he explained to us uh, the, the, the next steps. Also we achieved the, uh, the SEN workshop agreement, but how that could look like, what could be done with the SEN workshop agreement that stays as alone as a CVA, or um, if we want to push it forward to a, to a standardization, which would have, of course, a positive effect later on when we want to uh, market our volatile fatty acid platform and uh, the follow-up uh, follow processes to transform this volatile fatty acids in added value compounds. Then, of course, bioeconomy per se or biological process fermentation means not that this process per se is environmentally friendly, as uh, also Bruno now during the roundtable stressed that. Um, only it's a biopolymer means not that it, the whole production process is economically, uh, environmentally friendly. And there are different aspects like use of solvents must be considered. Uh, so therefore, Vasya from NTUA, she, she uh, summarized our results about the, the life cycle assessment uh, for our different uh, products, which we, we achieved during, during our pro uh, process. So, this life cycle assessment is all the time very important also if you are developing new processes to, to really to be able to say you have a sustainable process in the end. So it's all the time important to, to uh, um, yeah, uh, accompany uh, process developments with this. And finally, as explained already before, uh, during the project we are not only making the pure technology development. No, we, we, we also checked on the whole value chains and tried to get insights on the behavior of these value chains um, to, to look what would be the best uh, actions which has to be taken that later on we can uh, enter the market uh, easier or, or yeah uh, to, to adopt our new technologies in a, in, in a, in a faster way. Therefore, Sia from, from EBL presented there uh, the, the, the multi-level approach in assessing circular uh, green technology adaptation that's mainly based on, on the agent-based modeling. So I think um, we, we covered, as I said already to Sia also, the presentation, he summarized that very good. So on one side, we had the presentations about technology developments, and on the other side, we were accompanying them with the, all the support actions, what, what are needed, like life cycle assessment, uh, pre-standardization approaches, analysis of the value chains uh, to, to bring our um, technology, the volatile fatty acid platform, and also the biotechnological processes as soon as possible to the market and thereby uh, contributing to the implementation of a circular um, uh, economy, bioeconomy. So I'm, I'm very happy also or proud of, uh, that I could uh, participate in this project, and I'm I'm very happy also that we had uh, this. Yeah, our our partners, everyone was working very hard to achieve all the objectives. We have still one month to go, 
uh, but uh, the, the most uh, aspects uh, were already achieved. There are some things still to be done, which were delayed due to the corona pandemic, but also the corona pandemic were affecting a lot of things. Uh, we were able to move forward a little bit slowly, but we were moving forward and I'm very optimistic that we will achieve all the results foreseen until the end uh, of the project. There, I'm, I'm, we are open, also not only me, also if you have there uh, further final questions, um uh yeah we we me and also the the the, the partners would be also uh, willing to answer them so if uh, if somebody uh, has some more questions otherwise as you have also the contact information from everyone and uh, uh yeah you can contact us also afterwards me or also the other partners you can also uh, find the contacts on our on our website, um, volatile minus uh, h2020.eu. Um, uh, so if there are no more questions, then yeah, then I would like to say thank you for everyone for participation. And uh, yeah, hopefully we see us soon in our conferences or uh, in, a, in, in real life and not uh, only online, that hopefully the, the corona pandemic will, will stop at a certain uh, time again. So thank you very much for everyone for, 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 for joining. Okay. So with this, uh, yeah, I would officially finalize the conference. We have three minutes uh, before time, but um, yeah. This uh, yeah would would, uh, would be. Thank you very much. It's time for cocktails. See, uh, uh, now now they come. Uh, uh, Francis, thank you. You 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 are welcome. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, if somebody would like to switch on his camera again, uh, that we, we we see all the the participants in the end again that it's not only me in the end here there <laughs> <laughs> uh, no but that, that, gives a, that gives a better impression that uh, i mean as you can as you can see uh, 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 we are quite a big group uh, also, uh, all the time, only one person is presenting, but we are a very big group uh, which were involved in pre uh, preparing this uh, conference. Thank you very much to everyone. Yeah, as I Thank see in Germany, it's already. Thank you, Thomas. I, I have still life Thank here. You. Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Nice to meet you. Bye. 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 I have to see Thomas, the last one because I have to close the conference. Then. Thomas, I will wait here until the beer comes. Okay, I, I won't leave. Do you want what? The beer. beer. I have beer. the coffee. Uh, I the coffee, but uh, I. Okay. Are you already drinking? Yeah. Where is the social? Uh... I, don't have, I don't have. I have now to go for the children. <laughs> I have, to, I have to, to pick up the children from Karate, you know. You know. I have only water. I have only water. <laughs> Great job, uh, Thomas. Really, we are grateful. Marvelous. Thanks, sir. Huh? Thank you very much for four nice years. Thank you very much, Thomas. Yeah. Uh, thank thanks. you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 I'm checking that you are all leaving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need to figure out how to leave. How, how you can leave? Ah, that, 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 that's a little bit. That's a little bit uh, how can I leave? Yes. <laughs> that is the difficult part I was letting you off for it. I have no that's idea. Funny. For the reason I'm waiting, this time the last one is leaving. But, but Marcus, you are not the only one. Alright is still there and Thais is also still there. So. Yeah. Uh, Eventually, I, I will figure it out. So, I think it is somewhere 
if I yeah, stop it's, recording, it's asking me then... now if I want to leave. So thanks for the organization and okay, uh, have bye. a nice evening. Bye, bye. Yes, bye. Thank you. Thank you. No, Thomas. Bye. 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 If you go to the movies, uh, then after the, the the title ending, you know, there could be one extra little part of a movie. So I, I was waiting for this. A part of a movie? Which movie? After the, the, the end titles, there could be a little extra. Some movies have that. Okay, the next time. <laughs> I, next time I do. <laughs> Thank you, okay. Thomas. It was great. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.